you'd better take off those rose-tinted glasses. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 romance movies that wouldn't work today. Well, you go out What? No! No? No! No. Hey, pal, she just told you. Why not? I don't know, because I don't want to. Ella! All right, well, you leave me no other choice then. Ah! Oh my god! I'm not kidding! <laughs> Do it. For this list, we're not looking at bad movies, but movies that have characters, plot lines, or themes that wouldn't go over well if they were released today. Number 10, Garden State. Few movies have aged as poorly as Garden State. I feel so used. <laughs> Thanks for your help, or at least your good intentions. An indie success upon release, as the years roll by, it gets easier and easier to pick apart. And one of the worst aspects is the forced relationship between Zach Braff and Natalie Portman. Do you play the retarded quarterback? Yeah. Are you really retarded? No, I'm not. Cool. Great job, man. Portman is Sam, a textbook manic pixie dream girl, and as such exists solely to help Andrew engage with life. And what little personality she has doesn't make her a great romantic lead. She's just a little bit too childlike for their relationship to be compelling. And who can forget the cringe fest where she introduces him to the Shins? What are you listening to? The Shins. You know them? No. You gotta hear this one song. It'll change your life, I swear. Oh, I'm sorry. You have to, uh, you gotta fill out your forms. Number 9, Gone with the Wind. It may be the most financially successful movie ever made, if you account for inflation, but it's certainly got its fair share of problems. Don't you want to marry me? I'm going to marry Melanie. But you can't, not if you care for me. Oh, my dear, why must you make me say things that will hurt you? How can I make you understand? Despite ostensibly being about a southern plantation during the American Civil War, the social issues are pushed into the background so we can focus on Rhett and Scarlett's love story. Rhett, where are you going? I'm going, my dear, to join the army. Joking. I could kill you for scaring me so. I'm very serious, Scarlett. I'm going to join up with our brave lads in gray. But this hasn't aged well either. Aside from the fact Scarlett spends the whole movie pining for Ashley Wilkes for reasons that never quite make sense, Rhett's not exactly an ideal man either. In one particularly disturbing scene, he kisses her against her will while drunk and carries her up the stairs while she struggles. You turn me out while you chase Ashley Wilkes, while you dream of Ashley Wilkes. One night you're not turning me on. Number 8, The Ugly Truth. Mike Chadway is a cynical womanizer brought onto Abby's morning show to try and boost the ratings. How dare you burn those books? They've helped my personal life more than I can say. What's your boyfriend's name, Princess? Well, I'm not seeing anyone right my now. My point exactly, Shrek. Next caller. And then he inserts himself into her love life to give her all kinds of advice, like never criticize the man you're dating, always tell him he's good and bad, and laugh at all his jokes. Basically, pretend to be a completely different person. Good night. Yeah. Good night. You yeah. have fun. Yeah. yeah. It's thanks to Mike that Abby realizes the hot doctor she spent the whole movie trying to seduce isn't the right man for her. No, she actually belongs with this disrespectful misogynist who freely admits he only cares about a woman's looks and never learns or grows. Yes, it can be edgy and yet intriguing. Unless you can get him to bang three crack whores and a German Shepherd on live TV, no one's gonna give a shit. Number seven, Bring It On. There are a lot of awesome things about Bring It On, like its depiction of cheerleading as a sport that requires genuine skill and dedication, not to mention Kirsten Dunst's winning performance. Missy is bank. Uh, bankrupt? We've already so decided on Jamie. <laughs> Courtney, this is not a democracy, it's a cheerocracy. I'm sorry. But I'm overruling you. If it was made today, people would probably criticize it for not going far enough in the social issues it comments on. The general tone and musculature. Especially egregious is the casual homophobia throughout, and the use of numerous slurs. But the worst scene of all has to be when male cheerleader Jan takes it upon himself to grope Courtney during a cheerlift in front of hundreds of people. Yikes. Number 6, 16 Candles. Ah, the 80s. The source of all the best high school movies. And 16 Candles. 
Despite being required viewing for Annie John Hughes' nut, it's got a lot of problems, primarily the way it leans into rape culture. Very hostile. Come on, what's the problem here? I'm a boy, you're a girl. Is there anything wrong with me trying to put together some kind of relationship between us? These range from Sam getting propositioned by Uber creep Ted on the bus, to her own grandparents inappropriately examining her body, and finally to the comedic date rape scene with Carolyn. I can get a piece of ass anytime I want. Shit, I got Carolyn in the bedroom right now, passed out cold. I could violate her ten different ways if I wanted to. And that's before you get to the blatant racism directed at the film's Chinese character. Molly Ringwald has since said that while Sixteen Candles and her other 80s hits will always be important to her, a lot of its subject matter is unacceptable. Very clever dinner. Appetizing food fitting neatly into interesting uh, round pie. It's a quiche. Number 5. How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days According to this movie, the key to a long-lasting romantic relationship is to base it on lies and constantly play mind games. Mm. Honey, mm. look what I got for us. <laughs> look at that. <sighs> oh, oh, wow. <laughs> look at him go. What is it? Jumper. <sighs> it's a Chinese crusted, of course. No kidding, a Chinese crusted. Mm. Andy endeavors to make a guy hate her in just 10 days for an article while Ben needs to make a girl fall in love with him in the same amount of time so that he can land a lucrative account for his advertising firm as part of an elaborate bet. It's a tale as old as time. Status is the reason to buy them in the first place, which Benjamin would know if he understood women, but you don't. <laughs> <laughs> you can't feel bad about that, Ben. No man does. Matthew McConaughey and Kate Hudson are a winning pair, and her attempts to drive him away result in a few funny moments. But the fact remains that the premise is more than a little bizarre. I used Photoshop at work today to composite our faces together to see what our kids would look like. Our family album! Number 4. Breakfast at Tiffany's While in a lot of ways the story of Holly Golightly, a high-class escort in New York, is ahead of its time, in others its age shows painfully. <laughs> oh. The entire character of Mr. Yuniyoshi, Holly's neighbor, is little more than a racist caricature. To make matters significantly worse, he's played by a white man, Mickey Rooney. I broke this! Oh, darling, I am sorry, but I lost my key. But that was two weeks ago! You cannot go on or keep ringing my bell! You disturb me! You must have a key made! But it won't do any good, I just lose them all. The love story at the core of the film about Holly and Paul also leaves much to be desired. She spends most of the runtime telling him he reminds her of her brother, Fred, even calling him Fred, while he gets more and more possessive. It's hard to root for their happy ending. Wherever you're going, I'm going your way. Number 3. Love Actually Christmas comes but once a year, and inevitably we remember something else unpleasant about this holiday classic. They're all of me. The most famous scene that doesn't work anymore is when Andrew Lincoln's creepy character professes his feelings for his best friend's wife after he spent their whole wedding filming her rather than the ceremony. Night, night, night. <laughs> Meanwhile, Alan Rickman's Harry cheats on his wife, and Martine McCutcheon's Natalie is repeatedly fat shamed. Imagine your husband bought a gold necklace and come Christmas gave it to somebody else. God. Would you wait around? Then there's Colin's subplot, where he travels to the US with a bag full of condoms and woos easily impressed women with his accent alone. That is so cute. Hi, I'm Stacy. <laughs> Jeannie? Yeah. This is... Colin. Number 2. Grease Nobody can deny that Grease is a classic full of great moments and songs, but the grand finale leaves much to be desired. Away. 
If the movie came out today, the ending would surely be tweaked, because the original morale sees Sandy changing her entire personality to seduce Danny. Sandy? Tell me about it, Stud. Sure, Danny is willing to change too, but guess who actually follows through? And while Summer Nights may be a popular karaoke choice around the world, it has its fair share of problems, the biggest being one of the guys asking whether Sandy put up a fight. It's not the only time Grease seems confused about consent either. Danny tries to force himself on Sandy at the drive-in, and Vince tries to roofie Marty. Oh, Sandy! Sandy, what's the matter with you? I, I thought I meant something to you. To you? You think I'm gonna stay here with you in this this sin wagon? Before we unveil our outdated top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Help me, please. Stupid, Holly. Oh. 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 Yeah, that's right. You got him. You got him. Oh. Enough. Enough. Are you okay? Yes, okay, yes. I'll be right back. Hey, come no, here. No, 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 no. From what? From what? From a pack of stampeding buffalo. Oh, that's from what? Good, good. Don't be afraid. Get right in there. A little bit more. A little bit more. Good, good. It'll be fine. There you go. Check this. I'm having an affair. I like Jack. Who's Jack? Peter's brother. So? So he thinks I'm engaged. To who? To Peter. Yes, I'd like to hire you as an employee. Would you consider spending the week with me? <laughs> I will pay you to be at my beck and call. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, she's all that. Still smarting from being dumped by the hottest girl in school, prom king Shuin Zack Seiler decides he's going to pick out a new girl and transform her into his ideal woman. Gentlemen, we have a winner. <laughs> what, Lainey Boggs? Nah, no, 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 no. Hey, a bet's a bet, bro, right, Preston? While it's a solid premise for a classic 90s rom com, the mental gymnastics required to pretend Rachel Lee Cook isn't gorgeous already is almost too much. He knows my name. That's not your name. That's not his name. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> so, Lanny, listen. I was wondering if maybe you'd want to... Let's go, Simon. It embarrassed me horribly in front of all these people. Luckily, though, she eventually takes off her glasses and puts on a dress so we can tell she really was a girl all along. Though it's still a great movie and he eventually falls for her because of who she is, this trope leaves a bad taste in your mouth. You know, I made that bet before I knew you, Lainey. Before I really knew me. What was it for anyway? I mean, what did you end up losing? Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.